Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Warhammer 40k combat tips. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the top six mistakes that people make in the combat phase. The first mistake is not wrapping and trapping. Second is not playing around combat interrupt, biting off more than you can chew, increasing charge distances with your shooting, not remembering about your opponent's heroic intervention, and not knowing the proper engagement rules. The goal of this video is to improve your ability to play in the combat phase of Warhammer 40k. And if you learn something new and find it useful, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends because that's how we can get these tactics videos out there. The first mistake is not wrapping and trapping models in the combat phase. So this abuses the rule about being locked in combat. Essentially, if you have models in combat, the opponent can't shoot at you unless they're a vehicle, and other units can't shoot into combat with you. So in other words, by kind of wrapping and hugging your opponent's models, uh, you can protect your own guys from being shot. The next rule we have to look at is piling in. So after you charge, but before you attack, your models get to pile in. They get to move three inches closer to an enemy model. That doesn't mean they have to move directly closer, and that's something we can abuse. Also, the third sentence that says that a model that is already touching an enemy model cannot move with pile in. So the way we fix that is we create just a little bit of gap with the guys we want to be able to move, and then we can use those three inches of movement to surround the enemy's model. After you've moved your models into position, you have three points of contact on the enemy's model, and they cannot move. You can imagine if you tried to move that model, there's nowhere they can move without bumping into one of your own models. In other words, they're trapped and they cannot escape. And because we know we can't shoot into combat, uh, you're actually protecting your blue guys and blue models. Now let's look at this at a unit to unit scale. Let's imagine we have a squad of blue troops and we're going to charge them into the red troops. You can see if we just pushed everything totally to the right, um, there would not be possible to wrap and trap any of these models. So instead what we have to do is we kind of have to snake to the outside with our models and kind of push that coherency. So now we've charged in, you can see we're already trying to wrap the group of models, and we're gonna pile in just a little further, making sure we're maintaining coherency, but really stretching it out in the middle. Because we charged, we'll get to attack first, we'll kill a bunch of models, maybe red kills a few back, you can see that blue is out of coherency, and now they're gonna have to consolidate. So after you've piled in and done your attacks, then you get to consolidate, this is the same thing, you get to move three inches closer to the enemy, closest enemy model. Uh, once more, if you're already touching, you can't move. And we also have to end in coherency. So you can see we're going to move our models to get back into coherency as well as wrap the unit. And it's also important to know that you don't actually need to base to base contact to prevent an enemy from falling back. Because if the distance between your two wrapping models is less than six inches plus the enemy's base size, there won't be an area for them to escape out of. It's six inches because two guys move three inches, and then your enemy's base size has to be able to fit out through that gap. So you can see that we get back into coherency, and even though we're not base to basing the enemy's models, there's nowhere they can actually move their models out, and we've locked them into combat. Wrapping and trapping used to be incredibly popular in 8th edition for a variety of other reasons, but one of the reasons why I think it fell out of favor is because of the stratagem called Desperate Breakout, which allows you to pay 2 CP, and then you get to move your models through engagement range and through other models, and then on a roll of a d6 on a 1, you lose the model. And in some ways people thought, oh, this kills wrapping and trapping because they can just use the Desperate Breakout stratagem. And that's true that people can still get out of combat, but Desperate Breakout costs two command points, which is pretty significant. And every model has to roll a d6 with a one automatically killing them. So even if we can't wrap and trap and protect our troops from actually being shot at because the opponent can always just use Desperate Breakout, it imposes a cost on the enemy and forces them to use Desperate Breakout. Additionally, you can only use the stratagems once per phase. So if you've wrapped and trapped two units, they'll only be able to use Desperate Breakout on one of them. So the takeaway from this one is that if you're not wrapping and trapping in your games with a close combat army, you're probably missing out on some uh, protection of your own troops as well as getting some free CP from your opponent. The second biggest mistake I see that I make uh, far too often is not playing around combat interrupt. The stratagem is actually called counter offensive, but everyone calls it the combat interrupt. It's a 2 CP stratagem that essentially allows you to uh, attack before the unit of the charge do attacked. Now, if you are blue and you charge with one unit, uh, you get to attack first before your opponent has the opportunity to use counter offensive. But if you charge with two units, after your first unit attacks, the opponent can then use counteroffensive to attack your second charging unit. So let's imagine we've got two units of blue charging two units of red. 
you attack with the dark blue ones on the top and wipe out red's unit and then red pays two cp not only does he get to make an attack but he can actually take advantage of doing a pylon and killing your troops and then consolidating closer to you so not only does red pay two cp to try to clear a unit but they can also finagle getting nearly six inches closer to blue the way i had these little smiley faces set up it doesn't really look like red necessarily needed the extra distance to make a charge but you can imagine that in a game six inches of extra movement wherever red wants to go is incredibly powerful you'll hear a lot of really good players talk about how warmer 40k is won in the movement phase and that the combat phase is essentially a second movement phase always take advantage of piling in and consolidating but you have to be careful that you're not giving your opponent a free movement phase and ability to clear one of your units quick things to remember is number one, check how many command points your opponents have. If they don't have two command points, then you can punish them for this. If they do, you need to be thinking about it. Also, you want to start with the unit that's most likely to get punished if they don't attack first. So if you charge a unit that's really good in melee and a unit that's not really good in melee, you want to kill the unit that's good in melee first. That way, they only have the bad unit to combat and interrupt with. So take away that option from your opponent. And then also consider what shenanigans your opponent can do in the pylon and consolidate. Maybe the combat interrupt itself isn't necessarily all that punishing, but the extra six inches of movement they can move their guys could be. So consider what type of movement shenanigans they can do. Number three is biting off more than you can chew. You may have a super strong melee unit that you dump all these buffs on, and you charge it into two units, and you just hope you can kill all of them. And then you do that, you charge, you attack, and oops, you've only killed, you know, maybe two-thirds of each unit. They get to go, pile in, consolidate, attack you and everything, and now you've lost a bunch of guys. And you may look back at your combat phase and say, damn, I lost the same amount of points as my opponent. That isn't a very good trade if it's your turn, right? The easiest way to fix this is to just try to charge one unit at a time and put all your attacks into them unless you're sure that you can kill more than an entire unit. You never want to give your opponent an extra attack step. Consolidating into an enemy or charging two units that you can't finish off entirely is going to give them that combat phase. You also want to calculate how many models your unit can actually kill. I tend to take about two-thirds of the expected result and use that as my safe value. So for example, if my guys can kill normally eight intercessors on a charge, I'm only going to count on them killing five at a time. You never want to count on a coin flip. In terms of your strategies. Number four is increasing your charge ranges with shooting. Let's say we have our dark blue guys and want to charge the dark red guys. Well if we take our shooting guys and shoot those dark red guys first and kill them we've now increased the charge range for our blue melee units. Instead we want to shoot a different unit so that our charge range doesn't get any longer. Now it seems kind of obvious but uh, it happens more often than you think. Your opponent is smart, and if they don't want you to charge them, they're going to pull from the front of their unit. If they want to get closer to you, then they're going to pull from the back of their unit. So always assume that your opponent is going to make the right choice when you're shooting their models in terms of which models they pull. And the second thing to remember is that you want to make sure you can tell squads apart from each other. If you shoot at a unit and think it's not going to increase your charge range, and then you find out, oh crap, that unit was actually the same squad, and now you've increased your charge range, that could have all been avoided if you just asked, hey, which squad is this? I want to shoot at that squad. I don't want to make this charge any longer. If you tell your opponent that, uh, they will help you and... Mistake number five is not remembering Heroic Intervention. So Heroic Intervention is a rule that all characters have and many other units can get access to via stratagems or other different bonuses. Essentially, you can imagine a three-inch bubble around a character or, you know, or sometimes six depending on their specific abilities, and you don't want to end your charge within that bubble. Otherwise, they can charge you back. So just be careful that when you're charging in, you don't end your charge within three inches or six inches, of it, depending, of a character who has heroic intervention. This is pretty easily avoidable by just carefully uh, choosing where you're going to end your charge. Now, you can pile in and consolidate within that three-inch bubble and the opponent can't charge you back. That's fine, but you just can't end your charge within uh, heroic intervention distance of one of those enemy models. The easiest way to not get got by this is ask your opponent, hey, what units can heroically intervene 
and how far. You don't want to be thinking someone's a three inch uh, heroic intervention when it's actually a six inch. And then you just want to avoid it in that initial charge phase. But here's kind of a bonus one for you. Let's say that orange guy does heroically intervene. Well, you haven't piled in or made your attacks yet. And because they heroically intervened into you, they are an eligible target. So what blue can do is just pile in closer to orange and then attack him back. So you can punish your opponent for heroically intervening into you, but you should always be careful and thinking about, is that actually good for me or is it bad for me? And then playing around uh, whichever one you don't want to have happen. Mistake number six is not knowing how engagement ranges or attack ranges actually work. The biggest reason this happens, I think, is because it's uh, fairly different from 8th edition. And I won't explain those rules because I don't want to confuse anyone by talking about rules that don't exist anymore, but a lot of people still hold on to old rules. So if blue charges red, all they have to do is get in engagement range, and every model has a one inch horizontal engagement range. So as long as my front row is within one inch of my enemy, I'm allowed to attack with them. But that's not how it works for back row attacks. If I have two columns of attackers and I charge in, we can then look at the rule about which models fight. So uh, there are two types of models you can fight. Ones that are in engagement range, that's the first row, and then ones that are within one half an inch of another model that is within one half an inch of an enemy unit. So that's actually quite different. And if we kind of draw that out, if your front row is exactly one inch away from the enemy, and then your back row is one half an inch from your front row, you cannot attack. You have to be within a half an inch of half an inch to attack. This usually isn't a big issue because you can just pile in and ensure that you get within ranges, but it is very important that you ensure that your front and back rows are actually within a half an inch of each other and the enemy. Uh, there are no models in the game that are small enough that you can attack in three rows. So if you have someone who has 30 boys and they charge your five man unit of intercessors and start picking up a whole handful of dice pretending like all 30 boys are gonna attack, it's very, very likely they actually can't attack with that many models. So it becomes really, really important in kind of alleyways where you're able to prevent your opponent from surrounding you. So don't let your opponent get extra attacks on you just because they want to roll with every model they have. Uh, you have to be within one half to one half to attack. Those are the top six mistakes. I know there's plenty more that we can be talking about. And if you have any other ideas of videos or comment mistakes you've seen, drop them in the comments below. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.